Konnichiwa. How are y'all? I'm Leslie. I'm Laurie, and welcome to Sumo, Sumo Kaboom. Kaboom, where we talk about all things sumo. That's right. And this week, we are talking about some retirements, and especially the retirement of one favorite of ours, of many, Koto Echo. So we're going to be sharing some poetry and um, just some funny little odds and ends about who Koto Echo is and why people love him so much. But first, I know that there's some news to get to. Boy, is there news. Okay, well, let me just start off with some fun stuff. Our sweet little Harry Gonoyama got married in April to his Saitama, sweet Saitama High sweetheart. Oh, nice. So it was announced after the tournament, and it is reported that she is an ordinary nurse. She's not extraordinary. She's just an ordinary nurse. Ordinary. Um, which I not... think is translated as probably she's just like a regular nurse. Um, At least she's not a horror wife. That's true. But she might one day become a horror wife, but <laughs> we that's hope not. yet to be seen. Um, but yeah, they grew up and went to college or school together. And I think she was in the judo club. So they were always really, really good friends. And they used to catch up with each other. And then they started dating about a year ago. And he's the one who asked her, hey, let's get married. And then... She said yes. So they got married. And this is what's hilarious to me. The Japanese news reports that she is not pregnant because they asked. Of course they asked. Oh. Um, but she's not pregnant. But they are living a newlywed life in Tokyo. And a uh, funny little thing is that he has to go to his oyakata, who is Goedo, and uh, has to ask him, you know, his approval. And his, he said his, his um, stable master was... Very, very excited, wholeheartedly con congratulated him and said, that's great. Aww. And then Gonoyama then said, I need to pull myself together and work even harder. And he also said, I don't know how many children I'm we're going to have, but I, I definitely know I, I, I want to have kids. So before you know it, you just might we might have little Gonoyamas running around. So, well, that's great. Hopefully they're doing judo together in their free time. I hope. Yeah, well, he says that he has Chonkonabe at the stable with his heya mates, and then he goes home in the evening, and she cooks him dinner, and they asked what's the favorite thing that she makes, and he said very diplomatically, um, it's everything's delicious that she makes. So I was like, nice. you're acing it so far, Gonoyama, yep. in the world of being a husband. Yay! That's awesome. So that's Congrats. good news. Congrats, Gonoyama. I know you're listening. I thought I just remind you that the people's yokozuna akiseyama he has officially cut his hair and had a ceremony and i didn't know you know how his forehead like his hairline is so far down on his forehead yeah he's got a two head not a forehead yeah exactly and i just thought what's this hairstyle gonna look like i was a little worried like it was just gonna be like a continuation of the eyebrows but i have to say his short hair looks it looks really good it, yeah, I think it, so too. I think it fits him better than honestly the top knot. But, yeah. yeah, me too. You know, I thought the exact same thing. I was like, okay, this that is a little really bit good. better for your forehead. So there's that in his retirement. But crazy enough, like it was a very successful, you know, tournament or, um, you know, presentation. He wasn't the only one who had his hair cutting. But we learned that Akiseyama has a secret wife and child. And I was like, what? So, yeah. So isn't that fun? Fun little secret that he had a wife and I think they've been married for, I don't know, like since 2019 or something like that. And he has a son and um, he uh, his dream of having like his hair cutting ceremony and his like little boy there and everything. It was, he said it was a dream come true. And uh, so how sweet is that? It's adorable. And I just want to say, if you could have any dad in the world, wouldn't it be so wonderful to have a perfectly huggable father like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Now get this. If you want to get yourself a sumo husband, this is how they met. She came up to him at, I think, a tournament or whatever, and she gave him a little gift and said, good luck. Oh, it was during a tour in uh, Tokorozawa in Saitama, his hometown. Yeah. August 2019. And uh, that was enough to have Akiseyama on the hook. Sparks so, must have flown. Sparks must have flown. Gift. Yeah, and they they had a family only ceremony. 
back then, but uh, a year later, the son was born. So the son is actually like three years old. So like I have never seen him with a, a woman or any. Yeah, it was all news to me. I was like, what? Sorry, ladies that have been in love with the Kiseyama. He is off the market and he has been for four years. Yep, so. the people's Yokozuna is taken. I know. And but I know, you know hearts what? are breaking all over. I know. But you know what? I, I think I kind of already knew it because when you look at him, he kind of sits like a dad, you know? He has his arms crossed. What he's, do you mean? Because of that like, man spread? Yeah. Like, he already looks like he's a husband and a dad, you know? I mean, he no, has that look I about don't him. No, but that's okay. <laughs> you can see that. Okay. <laughs> He doesn't particularly strike me as as dad potential when he I look at him. He strikes me as a janitor. Like you could see of any of the wrestlers, that guy has a ring of keys, and he's like gonna let you into whatever room you need. I'm into. saying nothing. I'm okay, saying but nothing. <laughs> whatever the case is, I love Akiseyama. He I do cut too. his hair, and and congratulations, he's gonna keep on keeping on and uh, I think it's assistant great. coach. I hope he's happy, and I hope his entire family is just thrilled with him. What a career that man had! What I know a career. I know in and out of Makushita, Jurio, Makushita, Jurio, and like I think the last three tournaments, or he had a broken jaw in there too. I mean, yeah, he really went through it, and yeah, uh, he did. and what a what staying power and he's um, gonna be a I'm, coach you said yeah he coaches at um what is it kisei that he coaches at yeah i don't I know kisei. he'd be a great coach yeah i watch him all the time because he was talking about his ceremony i think it was on kisei he uh he was talking about all the things that are going to happen at his haircutting ceremony so you can watch him on the regular on the daily or not daily it's like every three or four days they have the kisei stable puts out their uh, YouTube channel segments, mostly about their Chonkanabe being made, but it's also highlights of the other guys. So it's mm. pretty fun. I don't think I've watched it. And he is often, yet. he's often featured um, eating and just sitting around and just, it's not that chatty, but he can be chatty if provoked. So hmm. it's enjoyable. If provoked. Like if, if provoked. someone like jumps in and pokes him, then he'll yeah. chat. If you ask a question, he's going to answer it. But okay. is he going to sit there at the dinner? Oh, I oh I watched. Uh, it was really uncomfortable, but it was really kind of fun. Him, they had Oyakata him, and then they had two other wrestlers go out and try to eat a mega hamburger that was like a, like a foot high and like a foot wide or whatever. And uh, it was a competition because they promote local restaurants on the station or on the channel. And that's kind of like another way to promote sumo and whoever's giving them free food. So they went there and it's him versus a younger, like active wrestler who Akisayama completely destroys this hamburger and i was amazed and i was just like y'all need to tune in the the jurio kid did not stand a chance next next to akisayama but akisayama still couldn't finish it because he had to finish the french fries too and the soda but he definitely destroyed the burger and i was like that is impressive and he's not really actively wrestling anymore he would do really well at the what's the name of that restaurant the texan the up in amarillo Yeah, you have yeah. to eat the that huge steak and all the yeah, like the and everything on your eighty plate. ounce steak or something. Yeah. yeah, and then you get it for free, but yeah, nobody can exactly. do it. Exactly, it's yeah. the same concept. Okay. The, this is the same concept. Okay, so this is fun. There is a mass exodus from Miyagano Stable. I don't know if you noticed that, but whoever retired, they always list who's retiring after the last tournament. Yep, I did. Notice and this. four wrestlers from like lower ranked wrestlers from Miyagano retired. So I, I'm i guessing they either had enough of those cramped quarters, um, but there was, w- there was one r- wrestler from Isagahama, one guy who, who retired. But it's just worth like noting. It's kind of strange. I don't, they're staying on this, this uh, Hakaho being, you know, coached by Isagahama Oyakata. All of that's still happening. They're still merged. It's a, it's a basho by basho basis. And so I'm guessing these are just kind of some of the casualties of just being cramped, having to do the work for, you know, your stable plus possibly other responsibilities. So I don't know. Oh, I don't know what's I, happening there, but it's it, things are are shifting. I wondered if they were making a statement. Like, well, um, I wondered if they were making a statement like this is not how my Oyakata should be treated. I so don't know. So therefore I'm quitting. Um, that Nobody, was my first thought. Because there's yeah. no accusations of bullying or anything that we know of. 
Yeah, I just kind of thought it was like, oh, this just must not be ideal for the guys at the bottom of the of the ranking system in these two stables. Because who knows where they're sleeping? Like, it's supposed to be able to house enough of them, but if you went from far fewer, having more space to cramped with a whole bunch of guys you don't know, it might just be like, you know what? I think I'm out of here. And the guy I wanted to coach with is not my coach right now. So I don't know. So there's stuff happening. Maybe we'll find out in the future. But uh, for right now, those two stables have gotten a little smaller. Yoshikaze is breaking off from Nishonoseki and that he's starting his own stable. So Yoshikaze is now Nakamura Oyakata, but he took eight of Kisenosato's wrestlers, including Tomokaze and I believe Kayo, who just got the bump up to Jurio. And he's taking him six of the wrestlers and then a hair cutter and like a, a collar, a Yobidashi and a and a and a Tokuyama. So he's going into the old Mutsu stable, which is like 250 yards away from the Kokogikon. And their old stable was like way out, like an hour and a half away. So I it was really interesting to see like Kisino Sato had a big stable, and so it made me think, okay, maybe they were kind of all raising them up together until it could be approved that Yoshikaze could could start his own stable. But he just plopped into somebody else's closed-down stable, and he says he's nervous, but he's excited. He said by the time he retires in 23 years, he hopes to raise up 20 Sekitori. And wow. Kisuno Sato sent with him, I'm guessing, two guys who are in the paying ranks to help keep the doors open. You know, no matter what happens to Tomokaze because he's so injured, he'll still be in Jurio. And this other Kayo guy is hopefully ra- rising in the ranks. Kisento, Kisuno Sato was like, OK, take these guys. They'll help you keep your keep keep uh, the lights on you know, hmm. for a while. And so that's really interesting. The Another interesting thing about that, though, is Tomokaze was interviewed about it. And I never really thought about this. If you live with your family outside of the stable, you know, and you live an hour and a half out, then when you have to move your whole family into Tokyo, he was saying that, like, my rent now is two and a half times higher. Ooh. So he's like, I don't really know how that's going to go. And I just kind of forgot about that. I was like, oh, he can live at the stable. And then I was like, why is he paying rent in Tokyo? Oh, because he probably has a family that's coming with and he has to uproot the whole family. And he didn't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. And some of these guys, one of the other Jurio guys was like um, talking about Kayo. And he's like, we have been in the same stable since middle school, high school, university and we've been together longer than a married couple. And he said it's like it makes him want to cry. So it's like breaking up brothers in, in a lot of ways. So, mm. yeah, anyway, but, you know, new stable, new, new, new beginning. So that's kind of cool. Um, Koto Shogiku also got approved. He is also breaking off from Sadako Take stable and he's also creating his own stable. So even though the talk has been like we have 44 stables, we don't need any more stables. Apparently, they're making room for a younger generation of Oyakata to be able to create their own stables. So That's great. I, yeah, I like a younger generation taking over with hopefully less harsh training techniques. That's my hope. Um, but that's kind of, that's, that, that's news, too. Lastly, Ishiura, he got his haircut, and he looks like a fine fox with his haircut. <laughs> Well, he looked like a fine fox with his top knot. I know, but with his haircut and his beautiful little wife, I was like, oh my goodness. He's got three adorable children that were all running after him in the ring. It was quite an event. And I think mostly everyone really loved it because this is the event that I think Inho was the baton twirler. Yeah. So he did the sword twirling. He gave himself a three out of 100. He just destroyed himself. He had such harsh critique of himself. But I think everybody else was just like, oh, come on. This After is like... the bow twirling? Yeah, he did the bow. So what it, no, it, whatever, whatever they twirl. It's a bow, a sword, whatever, a baton. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's that little staff. Um, yeah, yeah. But he was really harsh with himself. But everybody loved it because it's Enho, right? Because yeah, so... we get to see Enho in action. Exactly. I don't care if he's terrible at I don't care what he's twirling. I am on board. Give the boy a baton. That I would pay to see. Yeah. Well, and he said Ishiura 
um, not Inaho, but Ishiura said about the ceremony, especially when Miyagano Oyakata kissed him on the cheek. He thanked them and, and said, and you invited me into the sport when I was helpless, he said. Um, so the top knot to him, he said it was it was sadder than he thought he would be because it's been a part of his body and they fought together. So even though he's sad to lose his hair, I think he he's a fine good. fox. He is a Without fine it. fox. <laughs> All I know is when I just saw an image of uh, Hakuho giving him a kiss, and I was like, wow, that is very mafia-esque, isn't it? I know. It, yeah, they do that. Some Hakuho does it. I think it might be Mongolian. Maybe they do the kissing on the cheek thing, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it seems very, very like marking your next victim. But we know they love <laughs> really each other. Does. So really we know that Ishiura <laughs> and Miyagano Oyakata are tight. We don't have to worry about that. But yeah. it does look a little, it looks a little gangster. Yeah. Congratulations to all of the fantastic athletes who competed at the 2024 U.S. National Sumo Championships over the last week. We've been seeing your posts online. Um, it was a qualifying event in order to go to Poland and represent the U.S. in uh, that sumo match. And we are looking for the results online, and I can't find them definitively, so I don't want to put incorrect information out there. We'll have that for you next week so that you will know exactly who is going to be representing the U.S. in Poland. But for now, let's just say congratulations. It looked like you all were having such a wonderful time. Um, the sportsmanship looks spectacular. The event looked like it was run very well. Everybody seemed to leave in a very good mood. So congratulations to everyone involved. Thank you. All right, let's jump to our main portion. I'm going to start out my little section of this with a note from Tanner Cairns. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who was a listener and I believe a student, I think a college student in Florida, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, Tanner but, sounds like a college student in right? Florida. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, that checks. And he loves Koto Echo enough that he wanted to send us this note. And he writes, Aww. Koto Echo has always been my favorite wrestler, purely for his spirit. A man always willing to lend his chest and perform to his utmost, no matter the odds or injuries. His style is that of a bull mixed with an octopus. Someone an with, octopus? Yes, or an, oct an octopus. octopus. <laughs> very close to a bull. A bull became an octopus, became an octopus in my brain. A bull mixed with both of those animals, someone with power, but an overall objective of control. No one has fought the way Koto Echo has. He brawls it out with anyone of any size, and that is why I'm on the edge of my seat every match that he has. Oh, right. So yeah. he just said he just he had to send us that between doing his own assignments for school because he believes so much in Koto. I Echo. love that. Right. Also, thanks for listening to us yes. amongst all your schoolwork. Right. So he sent the simple haiku, the strength of a bull, the grasp of an octopus. Koto Echo drives. Nice. Beautiful haiku. Mm -hmm. A high key? I can't haiku. speak today. I can't speak today. <laughs> That's okay. I can't either. I think I've had like 12 hours of sleep over the last three days. So nothing's making sense to me either. Some days it's just hard to get the mouth to work. Maybe it's just I not know. enough exercise or something. Or you're already on vacation mode. Perhaps that, that's That could it. be. I might already be just looking ahead and on my vacation mode. But I wanted to start with that about Koto Echo because we heard right in the middle of the Basho that he was retiring. And so we sort of put the call out because I know there are some big Koto Echo fans out there. Um, and we received, we received some poetry about him. But before we get back into that poetry, just let me remind you who Koto Echo is, okay? Koto Echo... He joined Pro Sumo in 2000, 2007 at age 15 and took a long time to reach the top division. He reached it in July of 2018. 
Because so he's a little guy. Exactly. Yep. He retired May of 2024. So that's 11 years climbing up and about six years in the top division. We say he's little, but he's my height. He's 5'9". So he's average. He's average height, but he's twice my weight. So he's like 280 pounds. He's almost 300 pounds, but he's my height. All right. Okay. Okay. And, and I will just say, you know, he's not He's not one of the, he's not an Onosato. Like he didn't, right. he didn't blaze in from the very beginning, shoot to the top. He took a long time. He hovered, he hovered, he went forward three steps, back two. He went back and forth between divisions. And then once he got in that top division, he hovered in the mid to lower ranks. I think only once did he ever get double digit wins in the top division. Most of the time he would get like eight sevens, nine sixes, five nines for five solid years. And I don't say that to disparage his record at all. He has done amazing things as a shorter man in sumo. Yeah. I mean, he stayed up in Makuchi a lot, you know, for being on the smaller side of things and He's fast. He was quick, but he was always hanging in Jurio. And I mean, as long as I've been watching, uh, he's he's been up there making a good living up in the top ranks of sumo. Exactly. He was born into a sumo family. His grandfather, I'm assuming, was also a shorter man, but I don't know. But it says his grandfather was a Jurio wrestler. Never made it to the really? top division, but he was a Jurio wrestler. And Koto Eko grew up doing a lot of judo at home. His granddad and his father ran a restaurant, and his plan as a kid was to become a cook there and do judo on the side at high school. But then he went to a training session at a sumo stable. Sarugatake? Sarugatake? Is that how you say it? Saru, mm -hmm. saru, yeah. Sarugatake? And he was so impressed by what he saw, he joined Sumo right after that and never looked back. His rise, as I said before, was slow with a lot of going forward and back. He's just not blessed with the long arms or the height. He's a smaller wrestler who had to train really hard to maintain his musculature and Sumo physique. His highest rank was Maigashira 4. And he never, ever missed a match of sumo since he started until wow. November 2023, when he had to bow out of a tournam tournament because he tore his MCL. And that withdrawal ended his streak of 1,043 consecutive matches since the beginning of his career in 2007. He's steadfast, y'all. He's steadfast. Yeah, he's like a tamawashi in that way. Yeah. And you know what I like about him? Like when you go to Japan, you see all of these like these works of art that are gods. You know, you'll see them in the temples and they have these eyes that are like kind of scary and really well defined but intense, you know? And every time I look at Kotoeko, his eyes stand out to me. They're so powerful. They look so intense. He doesn't put on a fake face or anything. Like He doesn't look like he's out there. To, he doesn't put on the, you know, the mean face or anything. But his eyes are so just, they have beautiful definition. And that's always what draws me to like his look is just like, oh my God, these eyes, these eyes would intimidate me if I ever met them across a doyo. He, his intensity and his beautiful eyes would, would definitely get me. Well, you might be alone in that, um, you know, adoration of his eyes, because most people adore other things about him. And I will get to those things in just a minute. Uh, but I think overall, people seem to love him because he's kind of average and ordinary. And I know that sounds really weird, but he's hovered in the middle ranks of the top division Ignoring the fact that he's one of the top 40 elite sumo wrestlers of our time, right? Ignoring right. that, no one seems to expect much from him. He's not a guy who's ever won a title. He's never won a special award. Therefore, when he got a Kachikoshi, it was real easy to root for him and to celebrate right. him, right? Right. right? He's not a collegiate level Yokozuna. He, he just... He seems like a nice guy that works real hard, is small in size, never sets the sumo world aflame, but does well. And I think yeah. people love him for that. I think so. He's that, the working man's rikishi. 
Yeah. You know? In a way, yeah. Yeah. So I went back to several places to kind of look at why people love him. And uh, let me share this haiku with you, or a couple of haikus from Little Miss Sumo, who often sends us poetry. And she was like, I have to send you one about Koto Echo. Kind-hearted, determined, dynamic spirit, loved by all. Yes. And that is true. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Beloved. Yeah. She also sent this one. Kyushu Basho. Drunken Japanese man excited to see. There he is. Koto Echo! Koto Echo! <laughs> I think that another reason people like him is because it's easy to pick out his name when people scream it in the audience. Yeah. That's an easy name to cheer. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wakataka Kage is like a little bit, it's just a lot of. It's a little lot tougher. Of it's yeah. a little tougher. A lot of consonants. Yeah. <laughs> so then I also went back to our sexiest rikishi poll. And I will say, Koto Echo is the only rikishi, I believe, that we've ever received Shakespearean poetry about. And that Shakespeare poem was, Koto Echo, Koto Echo, wherefore art thou, Koto Echo? Deny me thy shoulders and refuse me thy gaze, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love and let me tend thy injured knee. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Right? Who wrote that one? Uh, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't write down the name, but I did just notice that they noted his gaze. So maybe there is more to his gaze. He has really, I think it's his eyebrows. I don't know if he gets them threaded, but they're they're well put together. I think from what I remember. We also had several people claim that their partner or husband looks like Koto Echo. So perhaps what? perhaps he has an everyman quality about him. Yeah, like some lady was like, um, some lady. <laughs> Someone wrote in, who knows? Maybe it's a man, I don't know. But they wrote in and said, oh, his, his strong shoulders, Koto Echo's strong shoulders and smiling eyes remind me of my dreamy husband. Uh, well, okay then. See? And All there's right. the eyes again. So, see, you're not alone. Yeah. There is something very much about his eyes. Holy moly. I pulled up a picture and it's him, like, muscle building. Oh, the man is jacked. Yes. He is jacked. Yes. And many of you mentioned, uh, I here's a quote, I love the visible muscles and his handsome face. Amazing shoulders and lots of spirit. So many people mentioned because so many people Holy mentioned his shoulders. Holy moly! Yeah, I'm looking at a picture of him before his top knot came in. Yeah, like when he was like 18 years old, and can I say, hunk, complete yeah. hunk. The man liked to lift weights, and he also yeah, didn't mind he's... showing off those muscles because there are no. several images of him going around. Like there's there's a great one where he's pulled his shorts up into his butt crack like it's a mawashi. Yes. And he's like And he's muscle building. He's yes. he's flexing. Yes. That's the one I'm looking at. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's amazing. How have I but, just like not been paying attention to this one? Yes. And but there's also ones, you know, where he's swimming and he's wearing like a floaty around his waist and he's jacked at the same time. Yeah, he's known for kind of being a, a jokester, which is interesting because he comes across like serious dad, kind of like uh, Takara Fuji does. Yep. Um, but yeah, he's he's a real prankster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's another quote about him from our sexiest Rikishi poll. Because my horror wife says, besides looking like a total hot badass, she thinks his shoulders look like mine. Oh. So see? Yeah. <laughs> he must yeah. look similar to everybody's partner. I love it. Um, here's another poem that we received about Koto Echo. Koto Echo, I only see your mojo on the dojo. I wish it could be more, for it's you I adore and yearn to see your mawashi on my floor. Uh, well, okay then. Yes. All right, say it Say it if you mean it. Yes. And here's one more from uh, Justice from Stockholm. My Koto Echo, you cannot be done, for on the clay you are heaven. I first saw you Kyushu 21 when you went to 11. But I saw grit, and I saw muscle, 
and I saw a fierce attack. So Koto Echo, it's time to hustle. Make Jurio know you'll be back. Right. Yeah. So I mean, people seem to love him, win or lose. It doesn't matter. People appreciate his physique. His eyes, his kindness, his open heartedness. Um, yeah, people just seem to adore him. Well, we're going to miss him. Uh, yeah. But we're going to see him as a security guard. And maybe when we go there in September, yes. perhaps Koto Echo will be the one taking our credit card when we buy all of that sumo merch. Maybe, maybe. He will be around. Um, he has decided he's going to coach, so he's going to stick around as a coach. He got engaged last year, so oh, I, who knows? I would think he'd have kids. I thought he had a whole family. No, he does by now. No, he's huh. 32 years old. Okay. So, you know, he was dedicated to the sumo for a while. Also, maybe because when I looked up his hobbies, it was just sleeping. Okay, so that's hard to meet. That's hard to meet. Hard somebody. to meet people when you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Let's that's wish really him hard. Many years ahead of happy sleeping with his with his wife. Right. Um and hopefully he'll pick up some more hobbies so that he'll have other things to do besides sumo and bodybuilding and he could just live a wonderful happy life. Yeah. I I wish you the best, Kotoeko Mitsunori. Me too. I wish you the absolute best. And uh, we will get to see him one of these days with a short haircut and uh, I'm sure walking around the Kokugi Con. So we'll we'll see him like we do the other guys, just in a new chapter in life. Yes. Octopus. <laughs> Koto Echo, the octopus. The octopus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. That is it. Yep. It's a short episode this week, but that's why, like, we got to get our summer vacation on. We got to get our summer stuff going. But we will still be back at you next week. Next week, we don't know what we'll be talking about, but we will be talking about sumo. That is one one thing for sure. So until next week, I am Leslie. I'm Laurie. See y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.